How you doing, folks? This is Scrolling with Charlie, uh, Season 1, Episode 6. And the second I said that, somebody nuts wrote to me on Facebook just to screw with me and distract me. But it didn't work. So <laughs> today we don't have a full panel because probably everybody's out having fun. You know, it's the holiday season. I'm kidding. I don't know why they're not here. But we're going to... Before we jump into roll call, I want to make it a point at the beginning of, of this show to mention some other shows because I think part of the YouTube community and the Google Plus community is sharing, so I wanted to do that. Now, if, if you're into woodworking more so than just scroll sawing, you may want to check out Summer's Woodworking. It's run by Brian Gidney. He's a, he has, runs a Google Plus show. So look for Su Summer's Woodworking and or Brian Gidney on uh, Google Plus and Facebook. Uh, for the links to that, Gidney is spelled G-I-D-N-E-Y. That's now two messages while I'm talking. And that that's it right at this time. Starts the same time as this show. And there's a third message. Uh, uh, see, it's working because I already forgot what I was going to say. Oh, 6 p.m. Eastern, I mean 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, which means it's already passed, is the Maritime Woodworkers guys. They run a show called Woodworkers Weekend Shop Talk. This is the only scroll saw specific show, but if you're into woodworking, go to one of them. But uh, uh, Maritime Woodworkers are Matt Brander and Jason McGinn. And that being said, them them all being plugged, let me go and do roll call. And while y'all are doing roll call, uh, Russ, if you don't mind, after I introduce or bring on John, I'm going to have you do the rest of the roll call while I see if these messages are people trying to get on, okay? Copy. Russ, are you with me? I got it all thumb, thumbs up. You didn't see. Oh, me. sorry. The thumbnail wasn't moving. All right. So we're going to start. We're going to start with John Cousins. He's in uh, something Alberta, Canada, and we're going to go from there. And uh, I'm going to let the the camera do the moving while I'm talking to people. I'll meet myself, so I don't screw anything up. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, it's John P. A. Cousins here up in Grand Prairie, Alberta, <coughs> Canada. Um, been uh, scrolling a couple years, uh, working on an Excalibur 21. Um, do a lot of spiral work, uh, spirals all, always. And um, uh, you can contact me at, at my Facebook page, Wood If I Could, W O O D, and or contact me on Facebook at John P A Cousins, C O S E N S. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, next on the list, I'm just going to go down my list that I can see you next in line on camera, and that would be Rick Hutchinson. Unmute yourself and uh, tell us about you. Yeah, Rick Hutchinson. Uh, Scrollsaws.com is my website, Facebook, and YouTube under Rick Hutchinson. And I guess that's about it. Thank you, Rick. Uh, next down the line is going to be somebody that has my name. He's an imposter, although his last name's not the same. Is uh, Russ Meadows? Go ahead and uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm from Beaumont. I've been uh, scroll some for about seven, eight months, and uh, I don't have a Facebook page, contact or anything like that. No website. Just here to learn. Well, you need you need to get one of both. So. We'll get we'll get back with you and uh get get you set up so. Okay. Cool. Uh, next is uh Scott. Hi, uh, my name is Scott Sanders. I've been scrolling for about ten years. I live in Coweta, Oklahoma. I use a Dewalt 788. Um, that's about it. Oh, I do have a Facebook and a YouTube channel under my name Scott Sanders. That's good. Uh, and then we got Tom, um, but uh, he has no video, and uh, I don't know if you're there, Tom. Going once, going twice. So a little lady in the second row. She's a nation nation. I know. It's all right. It's just a. But you got ruby li red lips, blonde hair, and blue eyes, and I'm about to give my give heart my to heart you. Bye. Karaoke with Charlie and Russ, by God, the show's been switched. I'm just kidding. God, I'm so sorry y'all had to hear that. Well, none of those were messages to me. They were just people writing the crap that I've been tagged in. 
Thank you for that, John Cousins. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, where the heck are we? I've already mentioned them other dang shows, by God. Now yep. we're on to the list. Yeah, we need to get over to uh, my my socially acceptable co-host. Let him introduce himself. Oh, I forgot about myself. That's true. Well, I forget uh, about you too. It's a habit. <laughs> Uh, my name is Russ Clarity. Uh, you can reach me at Simply Wooden Creations on Facebook, uh, Simply Wooden Creations on uh, YouTube, and www. Even though Charles says I don't have to say that. dot Simply Wooden Creations. dot com. I, I could be wrong. Some of you techie fellers could tell me, but I don't think you have to you have to type in www anymore these days. I just like that. I just like the sound of it. www. dot yeah, but that makes you sound like a ring. WWW was our ex-president, president, president. Anyway, <laughs> all right, that was so stupid on my part, but uh, that's what I'm known for. So, who am I? I'm that guy that you have to get stuck watching every week just to see your your favorite guy, Russ. Anyways, I'm Charles Daring, YouTube. I go by Charles Daring Scroll. That's why you'll be watching this video if you're not watching it live. Facebook, what am I? Who am I? I am the Charles Daring because Charles Daring was taken. I am in Gainesville, Texas, halfway between Dallas and Austin, about three hours from uh, Russ Meadows, who was just introduced out of Belmont. All right, I believe that's everyone, and I don't know why I started talking British, but that's what, I, what I'm like. So, we're going to jump right into topics. Or is, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Saturdays. Anyways, the first subject <laughs> is is I, I was going to make the first subject be fonts and how to make them scrollable, but we could still do that. But I already made a quick little video, so nobody has to see our pretty faces while I run it. But it's it's showing you how to cut curls, and I will narrate it because of uh, the lag when you try to play a video. So. We're all going to share a nice acid trip while I go to full screen. Nice, depending on what you're into. You know, it's all that. But okay, where's my video? There we go. Okay, we're going to pause it now. This is how to cut a spiral. Now you may be thinking, well, duh, I can cut a spiral, but watch what happens. If you start from the outside of the spiral, this will happen. I'm excited too, and I filmed it. And I don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm just kidding. Just and no, I don't follow the line closely. Oh wait, that was the one that didn't mess up. So <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared, but I got yeah, because what I did, uh, yeah, I yeah, see, I tried to make it break and it didn't break, so it went against what I was saying. I meant to edit that part out, but I didn't have time. So y'all keep laughing at me. <laughs> I'm going to move on over to the spiral that's to the left of it, and that did what I wanted it to do. Now, it's called live uh, on camera. It uh, never works when you want it to work. Absolutely, and it never doesn't work when you don't want it to work, but, which is what happened here. But okay, The key to cutting spirals, in my opinion, which works most often and most reliably, is to start from the center of a spiral. And this next cut will show you why. Forget the fact that first one worked. And my, I just got lucky. Now, even though you see my pilot hole in the middle here, I started from the end to prove my point. Because that's where I should have drove. Because I, I thought this is the one that was going to work when I showed you how to do it. And that was the one that was supposed to mess up. So forget this middle one. You never saw that. The pilot hole is at the end of the spiral. Let's say this is the curly Q on the end of a real fancy letter A or something. Let's just say that. But... Uh, now, if you piece away at it, you know, if it's wider than a single line, sometimes it can work like it accidentally did in the middle one. Uh, that can work, too. But watch here. And this is it without holding it or stabilizing anything or with a zero clearance insert. Uh, you can use your fingers to, to steady it to lessen the odds of what's about to happen. And, yes, that's still my old saw table you're seeing. This is very suspenseful, so watch right up till the end of that. I know it's exciting, isn't it? Uh, I'm, I'm, 
Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom! That's what you don't want to happen. That's why we start from the center of a hose or what's it? Spiral. If you want to see that again, I know it was it was neat to look at. So we're gonna play that again, Sam. Boom! Anybody want to see it a third time? I didn't think so. Now I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna play <laughs> I'm gonna play and and go to a a, a spiral that's not one line width. It's uh, it's you know thick, and you'll see how I cut it. This is where you're keeping the spiral that you're cutting out, but it, the whole the premise is still the same. I start from the middle and you piece away at it. This is what works for me, and I use spirals. I assume it would work the same with flats. You can let me know, but I, I'm nicking away at it as I go, and I know that's not a perfect spiral, but I did this right before the show, and I was hurrying. As you can see, I'm not going around the spiral and then coming back to it. I'm, I'm piecing away at it as I go from the center out. That way, nothing is loose. And there again, having a zero clearance insert will help. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to have one. And keeping your fingers as close as you're comfortable with on the blade, or not on the blade, <laughs> on the piece right near the blade is another way to stabilize it. So it can be done, but not easily. And the odds are against you. And I know this is going relatively slow, but uh, I don't know how to make it play fast on a regular speed video because I just made it. <laughs> yeah, so. It basically works the same way for a uh, uh, flat blade, Charles. I do the same thing. I kind of like work my way up and take that piece out and then work my way up. That way the uh, uh, the center piece or the fragile pieces in the, uh, have a little bit more support. Yeah, and tactically, even though I'm piecing it, piecing it away right there. Thank you, Russ. By the way, even though you see me nicking away at it, it still wouldn't hurt to keep your finger holding down the center of that spiral just to stabilize it. And I know that's a really ugly spiral, but I was, I was, I only had 30 minutes to get prepped for the show, and I still had to invite people in here, so it's not the prettiest spiral. So I apologize for my lack of artistic ability on this. We may have lost three viewers that wanted to see the perfect spiral being drawn, but. You know, I'm only human. <laughs> but you'll notice me stabilize it now because I know I'm getting ready to end the cut and sometimes it'll just pop right out of there because it's saying, here I am! Kind of like what I do at the beginning of the show. By golly, folks, we have us a spiral. It's darn pretty. It looks like an at symbol and an email address. By God, now I can't get the stupid video to go away. So I'll just hit it X. That's always the best thing to do. Every now and then you just gotta hit your X. I'm not condoning domestic violence. Don't get on me, folks. It's called a sense of humor. You should get one. All right. Okay. You might. Oh wow, we finally got Mr. Stallings, and God, God, a whole bunch of people walked in here. What did you do? Did you leave the gate open, Russ? Yeah, I did. They all just come flooding in. We got a Lee. I'm pretty sure it's not Lee Nyden because we don't have a camera mic, and we got a Jennifer. Hopefully they're not uh, stalking me or not to shoot me. Uh, but uh, before I get into any comments or questions regarding what I just showed, uh, I'll let Mark Stallings introduce himself. Now would be good. You have to unmute yourself, though. <laughs> yeah, my wireless mouse messed up, so I'm having to use the mouse pad. My name is Mark Stallings. I can be found on YouTube at Spiritual Splinters Woodshop. Facebook, I have a Facebook page of Spiritual Splinters Woodshop, and you can also find me on there under Mark Stallings. Been scrolling for about six months now, picking on Charlie for even longer, I think. <laughs> well, it feels like an eternity. Uh, uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. He's usually the one that will be the first one to point out that I got blocked on Facebook for spamming, so... He's, him and John Cousins both love to give me accolades about being the Spaminator. Anyway, thank you for introducing yourself. Now, uh, Lee, I don't know if that's Lee Knighton with technical difficulties because I wasn't looking at the screen when he came in. But Lee and Jennifer, if you can hear me, type any of your info into the chat section. Oh, it's just Lee. Okay, so it's not Lee Knighton. Uh, 
Okay, Lee and Jennifer, if you can type your info up, info, uh, uh, social media links and YouTube channels, unless you're not Squirrel Sawyers and you're just here to watch and hang out, let us know in the chat section. I will let the audience know, uh, since that's the only way y'all are able to communicate with us. Unless you're just here to stalk us, that's fine. Stalkers are welcome. Because I ain't scared. Okay, I forgot to open the Q&A section. People are saying, my God, Charlie, that was the most awesome spiral I've ever seen. Holy crap, it is full. All right. So I'm going to, I'm just going <laughs> to jump right into there. Oh, Lee has been scrolling about nine years. Good to know, Lee. Uh, tell everybody where you're from and where they can find you on social media. And I'm going to go ahead and read the Q&A section. Alan Carter says, is the reason you use a spiral blade because you can cut out completely around without having to turn your wood around and cut it from the front? That's half yes, pretty much Alan Carter. Uh, when I first started scrolling, I looked at the different kind of blades, and when I saw one that could cut in any direction, it just made sense to me. It seemed like it would be easier to do. Now, people that have never touched one saying, God, no, it ain't easy, but for me, it was just as hard as... <laughs> I love Mark Stallings. I can't get through a single sentence without him typing something to distract me. I'm going to stop looking over there. Okay, we're going to cover that part up. Okay, uh, yes, uh, I, li I like it because you don't have to turn the piece. You just move. Oh, I guess I can put the camera on me instead of an icon of somebody that's not in the chat. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Okay, yes, on, on a spiral, you go like this. On a straight blade, you have to, you have to steer it. So, yes, that, that, that is uh, why I went with this, uh, uh, what you call it, spiral. Easy for you to say. Alan Carter says, where are you? And... and We've also where we are. Uh, Lee Lee uh, says he's in Southern California. Can be found on Facebook as David Sherman. So it makes total sense that he'd be in here under the name Lee. I'm kidding, Lee. You're probably on a friend or relative's account. I'm just totally messed with you here. I don't know what Alan Carter meant when he said, uh, "Where are you?" And then he said, "Gotcha. It's okay." Uh, maybe he's. Oh, Lee is his middle name. Tom Watson has joined us. He might be another uh, non-Mike, non-Cam. Edgar Natris, a good friend of ours. Sorry I'm late, but I was out in the shop with my son. You can't beat family time with your children, uh, but you also can't beat your children. Anyways, that was Edgar Natris. Thank you for watching Edgar Natris. I'm going to stop trying to be funny. Yes, that's going to happen. Uh, uh, Mark, I'll just let you do your thing down We're there. We're looking at the screen when he types something. Well, I, it's caught on my eye, and it could be important. You know, every now and then something important happens in here, so I have to look just in case. Like, my house has on. never anything important to say. He's trying to distract you. Yeah, but I don't know it's him when I first see the bubble out of the corner of my eye. It could be saying, your house is on fire. Dude, get out of there. So i got to look, you know, because I'm too busy immersed into the show to smell smoke, except for cigarette smoke. I do not condone smoking, but I'm tore up in the head. Uh, alrighty then. Uh, Stevie Rogers says, Morning, guys. 1.30 a.m. here in Scotland. The wall looks bare, Charles, but the hope looks great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, I didn't have time to fill up the wall, but that was my latest video for anybody that hasn't seen it. Go to Charles Daring Scroll on YouTube. That's my YouTube username, and that is my latest video besides the Hanging Out shows. And that was a... Uh, yeah, yes, you saying hi, Jennifer. It, it is in the right spot. Uh, if you are a scroller, let us know uh, where you can be found on social media, this and that. And thank you, Lee, for... Uh, uh, Russ, I'll let you read off the stuff in the chat section because I keep screwing it up. Uh because I'm getting rebuttaled trying to read both. But, uh, yeah, if, if y'all can, you're muted yourself, Russ. You're talking and no I'll time. I'll take time. chat and you take the Q&A. All right. My God. That Russ, way I can, you can ignore Mark Sherman. Oh, well, that's hard to do anyways. You know, it's like looking at a car wreck. You can't help but look every now and then just to get grossed out. <laughs> that was funny. Come on right I there. Even called, I even called Mark. Uh, it was supposed to be Mark Stallings. Sorry, Mark Sherman. <laughs> ignore Sherman, not Stallings. Yeah. Oh God, I got. I got. Gonna ignore Stallings, not Sherman. Y'all, 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 y'all. Uh, we have eight, 
19 viewers, I'm surprised because I'm not really being all that funny today, but forgive me for being an unemployed comedian trying real hard. Um, to get back to the very important Q&A section, Stevie Rogers has been a very loyal international show watcher. I'm seeing a bunch of bubbles I won't read. Um, and he... <laughs> Uh, and then we will move to midday. He's been watching that one. Here he is on the evening one, so we appreciate your loyalty, Stevie Roger. He says, 1.30 a.m. here in Scotland, the wall looks bare. That's where I just stopped and interrupted myself, but the halt looks great. Thank you very much, Stevie Roger. He also says, it also helps to stick to the lines, Charles, LOL. That was funny. Yes, I was rushing because, because I was trying to get the video made before the show started because I don't always pre-plan real well. Tom Cole says, hi, tried to get on, but for some reason, not able, so we'll watch. And Tom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dang it, the room is full. If somebody falls off the face of the earth or Mark Stallings gets ejected for trying to distract me, we'll send you a link. <laughs> but thank you for at least watching. Oh, holy crap, somebody left right when I said that. Who was it? Somebody send Tom Cole a link, seriously. Because I don't know who just dropped out, but we got an opening. Who was that? I don't know. I don't either, but I'm going to go look. Because you can look in the chat section. Tom Watson left the group. Okay, somebody get Tom Cole. If they don't mind, write to Tom Cole on Facebook and send him a link to get in here, please. Uh, it sure would be cool. Uh, I'm trying, Tom Cole, because I'm your host. Anyway. That being said, I did the curls. Does anybody on the panel have a different view of how to cut curls, whether flat spiral or just anything in general? If so, just say your name so I know who's wanting to talk, and I will put the camera on you. Hey, it's John here, Charles. John Cousins. Yes, sir. So when when you're cutting your spirals, how come you just don't hold it down with your finger? I usually when do. I would just show you an example. Uh, yeah, that's all. Could have gotten in the way, and you couldn't have seen what he was cutting. Well, that that too, but uh, that's why, ironically, when I did the video, the first one worked. Ironically, but but we all know that nobody uses the guides on their saws anymore. You mean that little hold down? But yeah, yeah. I don't think I think that's the first thing everybody takes down, takes off of there. Oh, here's the here's the spiral like that out in case anybody was gripping their seats wanting to. See, my God, I want to see that piece of work. That's it, Betty. But, buddy, baby, whatever. All right. So, <laughs> spiral blades, making a spiral. How, how, yeah. Okay. So, anyway, it it's probably not a bad idea to get your fingers as close to that blade. And I see Mark Stolling is writing, so I'm not going to respond or even look. But you, having your, <laughs> it still distracted me. You, you, Put your fingers as close to the blade as you're comfortable with, and that'll stabilize anything you're working on, much less a spiral. But it is a good idea to start from the inside of the spiral and piece your way out. That's just my opinion, and I think Russ agreed with it earlier. Somebody mute. Yeah, Any, even with flat blades, uh, if you start on the outside and work your way in, um, the scroll reverse are actually worse because of the fact that you have teeth going down and teeth coming up, so it's lifting as much as pushing down, uh, I start in the center and work my way out. And actually, I use the technique like you uh, was doing with the spirals is as you start in the center and work your way out, you also kind of like work your way up, then take out that section like you did, and then work your way up, take out that section. Uh, it helps support the spiral around uh, the perimeter as you're trying to uh, cut it out. Ten four. Appreciate that. Is, is there anybody on the panel that does it differently than what I showed? Obviously, y'all probably all do it much neater than I do, but I was rushing. But now I'm American. <laughs> Get it? Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> is there anybody on the panel that does it differently that would like to say how they do it? Going once. Don't make me sing again. <laughs> no. <laughs> God, I love this show. Oh, okay. good lady in the second room. Yeah. Okay. Y'all know the lyrics by now, so just sing along next time we get on a, off on a tangent. Okay. Well, that went over like a lead brick. So we're gonna go on to fonts. Uh, Russ, I'm gonna put you on the spot. We didn't even prepare for this. 
I'm gonna let you open up some kind of graphics program, put a bunch of fonts in there, and you can cool. just show up. Unless you want me to do it, it won't take me two seconds to pull it up. Um, no, give me, uh, I'm gonna uh, mute myself and. Well, you're turn supposed to finish. Camera. <laughs> yeah, I gotta <laughs> talk first. You I'm gotta going finish your to, sentence uh, before you mute yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn off the camera and mute myself and open up Inkscape, and we'll talk about fonts. Give me a second. Okay, uh, thank you. You entertain. <laughs> yeah, just don't, from now on, don't mute yourself until you're done talking. Yeah, you had a Charlie moment. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, Mark Stallings, the sweetie of the group. Um, Rick Austin suggested uh, if you don't want to put your hands close to the blade, use the end of a pencil or eraser. The eraser end of a pencil to hold it down or anything. <laughs> anything. You know, that'll keep your fingers away from it to help hold it down. I'm trying to structure what I say because I have a dirty mind. So, thank you for that, uh, Rick Hutchison. And uh, we're going to, yeah. So, God knows how long it'll be before. <laughs> I love organization. We should all try it sometime. Um, so, yeah. Coming up, I'm going to talk real slow so Russ has time to get ready. After we talk about fonts. No, we will go into... I'm pretty uh, much ready. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Or Russ, sorry, got the name wrong. The, the beard threw me off. Uh, after we get done talking about fonts, we'll be going into bevel cutting and crap and stuff like that. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about the show details. But Russ, go ahead. Take it away. All right, let's see here. Uh, share screen. You got present? Are you presenting me, by the way? Oh, no, I figured people seen enough of you, but let me let me present you. Present to everyone. That's a trip. It's brought to you by Charlie. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, pretty much uh, any font, If um, and I'm using Corel uh, X7. I'm not going to use uh, Inkscape, but, but it pretty much works the same way. Uh, any font that you want to choose, I'm on Arial. Uh, we'll take one like the R, for instance. Let's get it blown up here. Uh, if you're going to try to scroll this, uh, this area right here is going to be what we would call an island. So we have to change that. Uh, if I want to continue out and just show the USS, oops, I missed my own name. <laughs> Diddly. Yeah, so uh, we have to change that. So uh, pretty much you can come over here. It's kind of easy. You can do it with the pen tool, the rectangle tool. Uh, you just come over here. I'm going to make a little s square out here. Go up here to the pick tool. Hold down the shift key. And do a back minus front. And now what we've done is we can scroll this out and uh, eliminated that uh, island. It's opened that up. So it, it pretty much works for any of the fonts that you want to do. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I got this font and I can't use it because uh, it's not. A, I, personally, I hate stencil fonts. Um, I think stencil fonts. They, I just hate them the way they look because they chop every letter and put it on caps. And you notice I keep using my name because I like my name better than Charles. <laughs> but uh, pretty much the same way with any font. I just picked uh, Cooper Black. Uh, now, if you want to, uh, some of the fonts have these little curvatures in here. So if you want to make it real good, you come up here, and I'm going to choose. This is freehand. I'm going to come over and choose the pen tool. You can actually come in here and try to follow the curvature a little bit more with the pen tool so it looks a little bit better rather than drawing the typical square. By the way, viewers, uh you're welcome to ask questions, throw in comments. 
uh, uh, in the Q&A section. I don't know if I'm backwards or not, so I think it's on this side of your screen. One of the sides of your screen, because usually my screen is reversed, you will see what looks like the side of a Rubik's Cube. It's just a square with a bunch of squares in it. Click on that, and you can submit questions and or comments uh, at any time during the show. When I squeeze it in, I'll squeeze it in. All right, so you just uh, basically do the same thing. Click that, take your pick tool, hold down the shift key, come in here, front minus back, ba boom. Ba -boom. So, the, yeah, it's there, ba boom. That's my new word for the day. There's not really any font that you cannot uh, make into. I mean, some of them are so ridiculous, yes. Um, but pretty much all your uh, fonts. So here we have, uh, I chose this guy's name. I don't know who he is. I don't know, but I heard he's pretty, pretty dang stud puppyish. Uh, the pen tool is an excellent tool for this because now if I try to use the typical square and come in here, it's actually not going to look uh, really great. I mean, I can come in here and manipulate it. The pen tool oops, didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Russ, for what it's worth, and this is not to steal your thunder, uh, I do have my graphics program open now with some example fonts in there. If if you decide you don't want to piddle with trying to yeah, do man, it, I'll do a couple of more and then yeah, you can do that. No uh, problem. Up here with a pen tool, and then once again, you just kind of like follow. This is an island in here. If you wanted to cut it out, so is the R. Uh, it doesn't take but a few seconds to come in here and make this. a font that you can cut on the scroll saw. It's relatively easy. That was the pen tool. Go around and make that. I come up here with a pick tool. Hold down the shift key, front minus back. Come up here. The same thing with the R. You can get as creative as you want to and how you want this to look and uh, make it look well. Pick tool, shift key, front minus back. And so now we've eliminated, I can cut this out and the A and the R are fine and there's going to be no islands in them. Uh, and it just, the list goes on and on what you can do with any font. It's you're not limited if you think that you can only have to use the stencil font and you're um, scrolling you're wrong you can pretty much take any font within reason there are some out there that I'm gonna agree uh, I don't want to open my mouth and insert foot uh, <laughs> yeah there's not every font may not be able to be used in scrolling but the majority of the fonts Arial, all the ones that you have a list of normally uh, can be made if you take a little time and you can scroll them and there won't be the islands that you have um, normally in them uh, and once again I don't use stencil fonts um, I really hate the look of them they'll take a letter that doesn't need like uh, to be chopped up like the E for instance and it'll they'll come over here and the I'm gonna show you this real quick just to make a, a note of it but They'll take the E, let me change over to the pick tool, and they'll do that in a stencil font, and I'm like, why was that necessary to do that, to make that look like all the other letters when it wasn't necessary? So if you get what I'm saying, uh, take Take a little opportunity. Inkscape will do the same thing. It's not a. Uh, it's almost identical to what I used here. The back minus front is not um, 
the same in Inkscape. You'll have to I'll have to look it up because uh, I don't use it all the time. And uh, with that being said, do you are you ready, Charles? Uh, y yes, but I have a question in the Q and A for you. Okay. That, uh, in general, what is the size of the cuts to eliminate the islands? It looks like numerous blade widths in Russ's tutorial. Now, Russ's tutorial is basically generalizing how to make it not be, he's calling it islands. Some people call it floaters. Yeah, floaters, islands, either one would work. There is no relative uh, uh, thing to say what, it depends on how you want to make this and how big you want to make it, I mean, within reason. Uh, as to how wide, if this is going to be very small, you have to be careful about uh, to make this wide enough, but yet legible enough that that is an A. So it just really depends. Uh, it's it's within reason what you think you can. That's a good way I'm going to put it is what you think you are capable of cutting. A lot of this stuff has to do with what you think you're capable of doing. I mean, I can make bring this right over to, uh, for instance, I could bring this right over. See if I can do this real quick, right? And that was the wrong tool to choose it. But, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just trying to make a point. I can bring this right over and close this gap. Yeah, it definitely depends on your error. But are you capable of cutting that out with that narrow of a gap and keeping that island or that floater in place? So that's what it has to deal with. And if you want to, I can do control. Uh, you could even go the opposite direction. Uh, you could even take more out, for instance. See if I can get back over here and do that. I think I've, uh, no, I can't, but uh, you can even take more of this out and leave an even a bigger gap to keep the floater or whatever there. So uh, even over here, I could come in here and make this even wider for the R. Yeah, I think it's all about the comfort level of, uh, of the scroller doing it. And John Cousins brought up that he's gotten to where he just, uh, eliminates the floaters as it goes rather than making a design out of it. This is, But this is for folks that uh, want to figure out how to design it. And you don't necessarily have to be, uh, you don't have to have a graphics program to do this. You can print it out and use whiteout, uh, whatever works for you. And the gap with uh, completely upon your, dependent upon your uh, comfort level. Actually, uh, since you mentioned that, uh, that was a very great idea, Charles. Uh, when I used to uh, scroll a long time ago when we were tracing, I, I did a long time ago what you're doing, tracing the pattern onto the wood, I would actually use uh, paint and stuff and it went in there and uh, covered up the areas just to remind myself um, that not uh, to, or to cut this out or not to cut this out so I could keep the floaters out of it. So. With the graphics programs we have right now, like Inkscape and uh, Corel, it's fantastic what you can do with it. But pretty much any font that you want to use and you want to scroll and there's going to be a floater or an island in it, um, you can alter it and make it work for your purposes. It, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. It's, you just, uh, the A, the R, the P, uh, the O, the Q... What are some other ones that you can think of, Charles? Uh, I got them all right here, sir. They are A Q R O P B D. Yeah, the D. All those can be made uh, so that you can use them. Uh, the bigger the, uh, I would like to do uh, one more thing to show since I just thought about that. Oops, I already have caps on. So the D and the O. Now. In the D and the O, I usually, uh, because of the way that they're um, oriented, I usually come in and on the D and the O, I do, whoops, wow, what have I got going on here? Live show, baby. Yeah, I usually come in here, well, this is definitely not working. 
<laughs> and crop it. Yeah. yeah. And crop it uh, in both areas to give a little bit more. Like that would be the D. I mean, you can crop it only at the top if you want to. No problem. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Rusty, mind if I scoot on over to mine? That way we don't go too long. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. But And the same thing with the O, just, you know, you can real quick, just let me do one thing, crop it at right through the middle, so to speak. I'm going to do this real fast because Charles is antsy to get over there and do his. <laughs> uh, do this real fast, but you can do the same thing. And there you have, now this is not an island or not a floater in the middle. So. My God, that is plum sexy. Thank, uh, thank you for that, Russ. I'm going to go ahead and very quickly jump into how I do it. Uh, that, uh, wait, let me do the present everybody thing. That being said, if all of these, great, my mouse stopped working, okay. Come on. Okay. Welcome to live shows. Uh, now, if these letters are made of wood, like where you see black, if that was wood grain, you could leave them just like they are and just, you know, put them on top of something and leave them just like they are. I wanted to do a, an example of blocky looking letters and scripty looking letters. Now, yes, you see little gaps inside of there, but. And there again, this can be done by printing it out and using whiteout. It'll be much quicker, especially if you're like me and don't know much about graphics programs. But as Russ, as I, as Russ and myself said, uh, it all depends on your comfort level. This is not going to be perfect, but uh, I can do this much quicker because I'm not good at Corel. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, before I get going on showing you how to not make that a floater or island, as Russ calls it. If you wanted to, for realism, you could glue this. White will represent wood in these. You could glue that triangle to the backer, and that would add to realism. Glue that, glue any of these floaters to the backer, and keep the waste piece that you cut out the letter to guide them where to put that piece. That's one example. Uh, very quickly, and take in mind, I, this will be the third time I've said it, but take in mind as I do this, if any of the computer ways of doing it are confusing, just simply print it out and use whiteout. Uh, but there again, it's your comfort level determines how much of a gap you leave. Uh, I'm not going to do a tutorial about how I'm doing it in this program because it's not what the program, what, what that's about. But here's a quick example of there. Uh, Q, I'm just going to, I'm going to go as quickly as I can through these because I know we're sort of getting the idea here. But you could break that here and here to make it more obvious that it's a Q because some of these fonts don't make their letters real clear. And on ours, some people will will go all the way down the length of that R and break it up like that, which is pretty simple. Sometimes I will only... I don't I've seen R's done like that, and that goes back to the stencil font, and I don't like it. I, I just yeah. would rather make the gap in there a little wider in the middle of the R than I would just cut it all the way off. I agree, uh, and that's why I put it back on the top, because that's the way I like to do my R's, because I like to make it look as close to a whole letter as possible. And there again, you can glue the center part to to the back, backing piece using the cutout letter as a guide piece to put it in there. And this is how you would do the O. Now, I'm not going to do every single letter because you can do the P just like that R, just cut out part of the bottom. And I know a lot of people like scripty fonts. Now, on B's, I do, I, whether, I know it looks like a stencil font, but I do, I do just cut it like that. And the same with D because I think it looks more uniform. But anyway, uh, the width of that, the area you want to keep is strictly up to you when it comes to your comfort level. And I'm, glad you, I'm glad you did the B because I didn't bring out the B, and but you're right with the B and the D. Uh, if you only go from the bottom or whatever, uh, 
I've had a problem with the top area. Uh, let's say I'm going only from the bottom into the first opening of the B and then go up into the second open of the B. Uh, a lot of times when I've tried to do that and not open it up all the way, uh, I've had a problem with that top area wanting to break off. So by opening it all the way up, it seems to work a lot better in all sincerity. Absolutely. Now, I, this may not have been the perfect scripty font for me to use because of the fact that there are bridges there. But, okay, for an example, there again, you can use white out. I'll keep repeating that. Uh, I'm going to use a wider line so I get this done quicker. If you want to make that gap wider, use your white out or, and or thing like I'm using right here. Boom. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, just your comfort level. That makes that all one piece of wood and much more stable than it was. Same thing here, and you could keep that from going as close as it does to the B. And I'm going to keep repeating it because I know that I'm not very tech savvy. So take in mind anything you see, you can print out if you have a printer, which helps from printing out things, uh, and use white out. Uh, Going through real quickly. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, just by the nature of scrolling, you'll get something like this, and it may not look as pretty as you would like it to. But let me do this with one line. But one of these curly cues like this, it may not look as pretty as the original letter. But unfortunately, we got to work with whatever the font is if if, if the customer wants that font. Now, I'm just going to kind of, you know, rough it out right there. That, that's a personal choice again, like you just said. It depends on what your comfort level is of being able to cut and open up, and then also what looks good if the customer's ordering something. That's yeah. Now I didn't I didn't increase the bridge on this one, but I think after a few letters, y'all have gotten the idea of what I, what my point is. And forgive me for not making these picture perfect, but you know. I'm Charles during the Spaminator. I do better spamming than I do explaining things. But, okay, so I'm going to assume that you all have gotten the idea by now. With the O, you would just make the bridge bigger there. Same with the R and A and the Q. See, that looks like a 2 to me. Or a, almost a cursive Z. I just I hate the way different fonts screw with things. And, but anyway, I hope that uh, explains things to people. And I. If there are any questions, which there are, there's some stuff in the q and I will jump right on right now. Let me stop presenting myself. But, yeah, um, you were doing that in what, Paint Shop, Charles? Oh. Uh, yes, I was using uh, Paint Shop Pro. Yeah, so, uh, you can do it in a bitmap program, which is Paint Shop, and you can do it in Paint. You can do it in uh, a Photoshop. Uh, if it's a JPEG image, you can upload it in there and do exactly what Charles did in different programs. Uh, I was using Corel. You can do it in Inkscape. So there are multiple programs that you can use to change the fonts to be able to use. You're not locked into a vector graphic. You can change over to Photoshop or Inkscape or Paint Shop or one of those. Or paper. Uh, or paper. Put some white out. Yeah, paper, paper is definitely the easiest way if you're not tech-savvy, and I'm not tech-savvy. I just happen to have been playing with that program for a while. Uh, Q&A section. Uh, let me go in the order I got them. Uh, first one, Stevie Roger says, I found it hard to make the right size of background so the whole text doesn't fall out. And that there again, that's trial and error. I'm sorry to jump right over that question, but that's pretty much what it is. Alan Carter asked what program I was using. That was Paint Shop Pro 4. I don't even think that's available for sale anymore. But uh, but uh, get with me privately, and I'll somehow see if I can somehow try to get you the program or access to it. Uh, and Dan Ingerbretson says, Russ, have you tried customizing an old English font? And what we did can be done with any font, but I'll let him answer that. An old English font, not in. I mean, I've done so many fonts, I can't even imagine. Uh, I'm sure I have over the years, but uh, pretty much uh, within reason, uh, any font that would have uh, floaters, you can do it with. Uh, you're, the sky's the limit uh, as far as 
your capabilities of what you want to do in the program that you are using and what you feel comfortable with uh, cutting out and uh, the sky's the limit. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, once again, open my mouth and insert my foot. But, uh, <laughs> there's a, there's an abundant of fonts out there that are not scrollable per se, the way you look at them or the way that they're done. And you can alter them or change them without too much of a problem and make them so that you can use them in your pattern. Thank you very much for us. And Russ was born right around the time that Old English fonts came to be, so you would think he would know. But I Actually, wanted... I was born a few years before. Oh, okay, good. Right, right after Dirt was invented. Okay. And the, I know this is way late in the show, but in the interest of fairness, uh, I'm going to let Tom Cole introduce himself because he's been sitting here. And we apologize that we muted you. It's just a good habit to be in, so background noise doesn't doesn't mess with anything. But if you want to tell people where to find you and social media links, go for it. Okay, I'm Tom Cole. I'm uh, from Cambridge, Ontario, Southern Ontario. That's about midway between Toronto and London. I've been scrolling now for going on 30 years. I got a couple of Hegners and. Uh, I only use straight blades, precision milled, and I get them from advanced machinery. All right. I cut just about every design you can think of. Good deal. It was good enough. I would imagine in 30 years you probably have. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, when I first started scrolling, I thought myself, what in the world did I get myself into here? I went and bought some wood. I couldn't believe how much it was. But... Uh, uh, Luckily, I found two sources of wood that I get. I've been getting wood free for now for 29, 30 years. Good Lord. It's all solid, brand new wood. That's good. How the heck did you do that? It's none of my business, but I'm going to ask well, anyway. <laughs> I get one from a, uh, a place that has high-end cabinetry and another place that manufactures uh, high-end staircases. And they always have tons and tons of wood that they either toss out. Uh, so over the years, I've been getting it. And in fact, I, I had so much wood, I've given away truckloads in the last couple of years. Good Lord, you need to you need to send a truckload on down to Texas. But uh, John Cousins is also in Canada. He wanted you to repeat where you said you were from. Uh, Cambridge, Ontario. That's halfway between Toronto and uh, London. Okay, I believe he's in Grand Prairie, Alberta, yeah, if I got that right. That's a few clicks out west. Yep, a couple clicks, by golly. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, unless, does anybody on the panel or in the Q&A section have any comments regarding uh, methods of making fonts cuttable or just how you, I don't know, how you do it? <laughs> All righty, going once, going twice, we're not going to sing again. Okay. Uh, where were we? The next, we're actually running good on time. We're, we just hit an hour and only one minute over, so this is not going to be one of those two and a half hour shows. Real quick thing on beveling, and I may go to Rick Hutchison on this because of his years of experience in scrolling. Uh, let me lower my camera a little bit. Uh, every scroll saw is different as far as how their, their bevels are set up. But beveling is used for either relief cutting, making bowls and vases, and after I point out on this saw where the bevel gauge is, I'll run over to Rick Hutchison uh, to get his feedback because he's had all kinds of scroll saws. The bevel gauge on a Hegner, this is a 22 inch Hegner, is right here. You just simply loosen the knob. You can use the angle gauge because I don't always trust the marks on any saw. That's not Hegner specific that I don't trust. But that's how you can do that. But I'm going to run on over to uh, uh, Rick Hutchison and asked him uh, how much of a difference do you see between saws when it comes to their bevel gauges and who do you think has the best one and what, what are some applications that you use the bevel on besides the ones I mentioned? Well, the bevel setup with the knob on the front and everything and the gauge is pretty much universal on all the saws. Like you say, I don't really believe the numbers on hardly any of them. 
uh, if you need an exact number. But most of the time when you're doing like inlays and stuff, your bevel depends on the thickness of the wood, the blade you're using, uh, the kerf cut and everything else. So really the numbers don't mean anything except for maybe to come back next week and try to do it with the same type of wooden blade. You know, it'd get you close to start with. Yeah. Uh, the one thing is on the bevels, I guess, some saws will tilt both ways and other saws will only tilt one direction and then some of them will tilt one way like 45 degrees and the other way they only go like maybe 10 degrees. So yeah. depending on the saw. And you can compensate either way. You just put your save piece to the left or right, and you can bevel the, make the bevel angle the way you want it. But pretty much the bevel on all the saws is pretty common and easy to understand. Okay, I appreciate that, Rick. Now, now I use. I would like to make a, a real quick point there. Go ahead. Um, on the Excalibur saws which is very unique and uh, which I really think I like if when you're trying to cut a piece on a bevel on a, a normal scroll saw the table is what tilts and so therefore you have to compensate and really be careful about holding your piece of wood in the pattern as you're trying to cut it on an angle with the Excalibur the actual uh, blade and the t um, head or the saw tilts so the uh, table stays flat or horizontal and uh, just to me I, I don't own an Excalibur I, w I want one just to play around with it and uh, I just think that would be like a lot simpler and a lot easier with that head and the blade tilting rather than the table and the wood tilting to uh, make bevel cuts that's just a point I wonder uh, about the Excalibur I really like that type of saw Absolutely. I, I think the Excalibur is the only one that has that leaning uh, no. upper arm head. Go ahead, that, Rick. That's not a new concept. I've got a saw that I'm guessing was made back in the 30s to 40s that does exactly the same thing as the Excalibur does. And it was a belt drive saw. Well, I'm not uh, saying it's a new concept. What I was saying is of the saws that we have that we're using now, like the Delta, the DeWalt, uh, the Porta Cable, the Sears Craftsman, uh, most of the saws that I have seen in uh, the last, I, I don't know, since I've been scrolling around, uh, mostly I see that the table tilts, and of all of them, the Excalibur is the only one that I know of. Uh, and I haven't been around a long time. Yeah. I, I was under the impression that that was Excalibur specific. So it's, yeah, it's, so I mean that's pretty cool that that does that, and I think it would make it a heck of a lot easier to cut a bevel with that saw compared to the table tilting. Yeah, uh, most definitely. Uh, thank y'all both for that. The uh, I forgot what I was going to say, so I wanted to ask Rick: Is can you think, or anybody on the panel, is there is there any other uses other than inlay relief and making bowls and vases that you could use a bevel cut on? On the the old scroller plaques that had the plywood cutouts that you glued on, yeah. to make their background plaque, they bevel cut the sides of that background plaque on a bevel to give it the plaque as well more dimension. Okay, so that would be sort of a, a scroll saw version of doing like a routered edge, is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Right. All righty. Well, uh... We have, still have 19 viewers, and I always say I hate to end the show with a lot of viewers, but we've actually gone through all the topics. And uh, one thing I've noticed on almost pretty much epi every episode, we're not getting a lot of comments in the comment section of the YouTube video after it's been uploaded. Uh, it's not so much for my channel's sake, but I think for other viewers, uh, if y'all have any comments, questions, future show suggestions, uh, please throw them in the comment section of the this video once it's been uploaded to YouTube and please share, please thumbs it up and it, it helps bring it up in the ranks and helps other people find it. Uh, but does anybody in the, on the panel have anything they'd like to ask, suggest, or or anything before we shut up the show? I can go down. Uh, just If you have any questions, comments, or anything, just say your name and I will bring the camera to you. 
going once, going twice. Karaoke with Charlie. All righty then. Uh, Q and A wasn't really active today, but we appreciate the the few folks that that were in there. The room will stay open, but I think it's full right now, unless a bunch of old people say, "I gotta go to bed because I've been up since I had my grits this morning." But anyway, uh, we appreciate y'all being around, and uh, I hope we answered everybody's questions. If not, feel free to ask them in the comment section because the Q and A closes when the broadcast ends. Uh, and I'd we like were just to say something uh, to also Charles. Um, if you have questions. When you're watching this, uh, when it's now on YouTube uh, and you're watching the rerun, so to speak, that's the only way I know how to say it, but uh, if you see something you like or you don't understand or would like to ask a question, uh, post in the bottom uh, in the comment section uh, a question because Charles and I do go back and watch uh, to look for these uh, questions or people that make comments and it also triggers us on in our email or however we have it hooked up uh, if somebody asks a question and we'd be more ha than happy to respond back to you to uh, if you have a problem or there's something we can help you with that's what we're trying to do we're trying to uh, encourage other people to get into scrolling and help them any way we can so um, if you watch this three months from now and decide hey I'd like to know how this is done Post your question. We would really like to hear from you, and uh, we will try to answer it the best we can. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, yeah, no matter how old the video is, any any comment, I, I'm i not a big enough YouTuber that I have thousands of Well, I actually have <laughs> a little over a thousand now, but I always take the time to answer every comment I see, so no matter how old this video is that you're seeing, right now we're all young and pretty, but it could be Years down the road, if you if you have a comment, question, suggestion, anything, I will uh, respond to it. But uh, anything is allowed as long as it's uh, scroll sawing related. And Jennifer, regarding your question, I'll, I'll the second we go off the air, I will uh, I will address your your question. And uh, again, thank you everybody on the panel for being on. We had John Cousins and uh, God, I can't remember the names of the ones that don't have. The cams and stuff up. We had Mark Stallings. Forgive me for that, Lee and Jennifer. Uh, Mark Stallings. We had and we had a. Uh, oh, Mike. Okay, so Jennifer is actually Mike. <laughs> well, I don't want to go there. <laughs> no, he's on somebody else's account. Lee was somebody's middle name. I can't remember any of that crap because I. Talks and saying thank you, Rick Hutchison, for being on. Be, is that Lee? Uh, as far as uh, Naden? That's, that's not Lee Naden. Yeah, I've already, already. Oh, okay. Already oh, yeah. Naked scroller and cross dress scroller. Alrighty then. <laughs> oh God, I should have not read that. But that's that's Mark Stallings for you. We had Russ Meadows. Appreciate you being on. He was a first timer. You're welcome back anytime. We had Russ Clarity, which we have every week, whether you like it or not. We had Scott Sanders out of Oklahoma. And we had Tom Cole for the first time. Very good having you on. You're welcome back anytime. Y'all are stuck with me every time because it's kind of cold strolling with Charlie. So unless I get hit by a truck or a puking blood, y'all are going to see me. Dan Engerbreston says, thanks, Charlie, for getting me hooked. And absolutely, that's what I'm here for is to get everybody hooked on strolling, hooked on Charlie, and sponsored by Spam, says Mark Stallings, because he won't let it rest. All right, folks, we appreciate y'all watching the show. Please. Thumbs up, share, because that helps the show. And no matter how old or how new this video is, please comment so we can get you know interaction going in the comment section. And, um, and we have 15 other episodes and international shows and midday shows. You can comment on those. We will answer any and every comment we see. Uh, that being said, please do not scroll naked, but for the love of God or whoever you believe in, scroll, scroll.